Welcome everyone to Beyond the Adventure. Today we're going all the way back to the first episode of the first season of Adventure Wednesday and let's get started. So beginning this episode here, I wanted to show you guys some really amazing flowers that we had planted in one of the flower bins outside, one of the flower hangers. Now this was two years ago. This is the very, very first episode of the very first season. This took place I believe in August of 2018. Let me go to the YouTube channel and find out hey, what's going on when the very first what's episode going? was. Anyways, I am just so awkwardly inside. talking it's right now. Don't or, don't mind the cringiness of the talking. I was still trying to get used to going back on YouTube and, and talking to a bunch of people that I didn't know. But now I am much more com comfortable talking with you guys. I'm much more comfortable with leaving the stakes in my speech and everything like that. Anyways, getting this adventure started, we had to go to the mall we ended up going down to the casino in Connecticut one of the two casinos there known as Mohegan Sun now we had to go up to the mall to go to the ATM before we headed down there and I do apologize this episode is a little more slower paced than yeah, what you guys are currently used to seeing live, on the channel one thing you but don't do is come here a random at black eight o'clock walking in the outside anyways let's try outward. to find because the people when the very here, first episode not, was not uh, yeah, kind of. You want to go to the mall at 8 in the morning to go to the bank. We're at the mall at 8 in the morning. Down the street. Very rare. I don't think I've ever been there that early. The, the mall isn't even open until like 10 o'clock, so we were there like, awfully early. Let's see if I can go all the way back. Come. i got to search. Like, I'm on page 10 of my videos, I believe, at this point in time. There are 702 videos on this channel, so this is going to take me one second to search through here. We are walking through the mall. To the left of us is AC Moore. To the right is Babies Are Us, which is no longer in existence. The whole Toys R Us, Babies Are Us chain and franchise has gone away. They're still existent in Canada, I believe, and also over all those in beautiful Europe. flowers. How do they stay but so colorful? Those are all the fake flowers inside oh, AC Moore. I used to have a buddy. Or I still have a buddy. He used to work at AC Moore. He doesn't work there anymore. Hi, Nick. If you're watching this, I know you watch my videos. So, anyways, going back back here to let's see if i'm still trying to find this we're we're only in like season four right now going all the way back i'm on page 19. um this is also when i believe hallmark was going out of business or not they weren't going out of business but they were restructuring and they closed a bunch of their stores and you know little places like that Man's is just yelling at me for over there at being at the ATM and recording near the ATM. Anyways, we're getting there, getting there, almost there. We're on page 24 of videos trying to find the very first date. Adventure Wednesday, here we go. July, or no, June 8th, 2016 at 9.08 a.m. So June 8th. 2017, 2018, so two years and two months later. I hope this is a little better. I hope the way that I present videos is a little better now. Anyways, there is a store there that is currently selling like a whole bunch of YouTube themed merchandise. Like they have Roman Atwood shirts and that Jake Paul, Logan Paul, the bird thing that they have. They have a bunch of different different YouTube stuff and copyright stuff and everything like that. They've gotten in trouble a bunch of times for like selling like Sons of Anarchy t-shirts and sweatshirts and stuff like that. Anyways, I don't know why. I like that old logo there. It kind of reminded me of a Fallout-ish themed logo. So we are just leaving the mall four minutes into the episode here. And we haven't even really begun. I mean, we've begun the adventure, but we're not really adventuring yet. So, leaving the mall here, I still have that shirt. I don't know where it is. I think it's got like a big hole in the back. Anyways, La Jolla Mall is a mall that is also owned by the same people that owned the Berkshire Mall, but they no longer own it anymore. I believe a company out of New Jersey or something bought it. I wasn't really a fan of until recently when I had there. What was it? And I don't think the audio is synced up the video right now. It kind of seems like my mouth is moving and the words are coming out slower. Anyways, we are heading right now down to IHOP and 
Honestly, I can't remember the last time we went to IHOP. Maybe this was it. Or I think maybe we went into a IHOP after this. But anyways, you guys are going to see something that I would go to IHOP in a heartbeat for if they had it again. And it was their cinnamon brioche or something, French toast. I don't know. It was a big piece of French toast. It had cinnamon, sugar, icing. It was just like your entire week's worth of sugar intake in one breakfast. But I feel so like heading down to the well, IHOP and West Springfield. If that's what here, I got before and I really liked it, I don't know what we're talking how about. How come I remember the second time us going back, the lady was like, "We don't have that anymore, but we have this." I think there was a caramel for breakfast. What the? You out of your what mind? What icing on your French toast? Yeah, but I don't. What yeah, about we're caramel trying to figure out what the name of the your French mind. toast was. I well, believe you had maple syrup and ice cream for breakfast. Yeah, but that's because I yeah. was a kid. True, true story. I, have I you would, ever eaten that maple syrup and ice cream? Comment down below if you've ever breakfast. had that because very it's tasty. pretty good. Obviously, you I don't, don't eat like that every day. That's a once in a blue moon like thing, a but it is thing. something good. I don't know if it's just like a uh, New England Canadians thing love maple syrup, or a Canadian don't thing. You know? hey. but and the Falcons. The Falcons? What Falcons? The Springfield Falcons. They didn't, Canadians didn't give us a Springfield Falcons. Are Canadians? Not all of them. The Springfield uh, Falcons. Yeah, that majority, two years ago, when how would you know? How would you know? Because they used Springfield to Falcons. Uh, they were there the, the, the entire time, time that I was growing hair. up. Now they are called the Springfield Thunderbirds, I believe, hair. because the they are associated or MGM slashes them. Which actually, weirdly, coincidentally, this very first episode bringing you guys down to the casino. There's actually a casino opening in the town way over there, known as Springfield, or right next to us. Across the river, known as Springfield, it's going to be MGM. They have a really interesting CGI commercial that they've been airing. So I'm trying to find Springfield Thunderbirds. Right there, that was a French toast. And a second ago, you saw this picture of me. You heard that? Okay, this was funny. We're in the restaurant, and somebody was like blowing their nose or something. So I just I threw a little comment down there. It's how like we're eating with an elephant or dining with ducks or something. That. That's the French toast I was talking about. I could reach through the screen right now and eat that thing. It looks so good. Something about Anyways, the Springfield Thunderbirds like Amanda, um, Amanda eats began playing in the 2016-17 season. Amanda, so I that just, would have been the I fall feel, uh, following I eat this. I so a couple months good. after this episode, after I filmed this episode here, the Springfield yeah, so, uh, Falcons became the Springfield cut ahead Thunderbirds. A couple minutes, and they and, uh, were called the Falcons because in Springfield on uh, a bunch of the tall buildings they used to have right nests where the peregrine falcons were. This is really cool section of Route 5 heading down towards Springfield there. It just like dips and at some point you're above the level of the water in the river. At some other points you're below. Very cool like city industrial type of area there. They also have a um, sewage plant so I would recommend leaving your windows open. Here we are getting on Interstate 91 South, just entering Connecticut. Eight minutes into um, the episode, we're finally I to show you something. When I was a kid, this right here. was a pit. Right in front so of us. So that mountain, when I was a little a kid, was it not there. It was a, it a recess in the ground, and they filled it with garbage. And every single summer, we would go down to the beach, and we'd go down to the beach for like a week and a half at a time, and we would probably go there about eight times, seven, eight times during the summer. And you could just watch this every time we went down. It slowly built up, slowly built up, and I believe that it's fully capped now. They are not adding any more refuse or garbage to it. There is the Hartford skyline entering that. Looking at all the buildings, there's a very cool design of a building where it's like trust, trestle arches or not arches but right there you can very briefly see it almost looks like the building is suspended on a platform now going down through connecticut here this is the same way that we would take every year to go down yeah, to the so beach uh, every single time we're, we're or go camping destination i have to show you this uh this cool cool rock so this right there. here what i'm talking about there's a rock they were, uh, face that also when we were going down to the Somebody beach you actually to took a different path bigger, or you took a different bigger, road and Check they blew the massive. whole side of the mountain out they so in the very right early right days of cell phones and you know when more people so, had cell phones than just you know the super rich we would come down here and there was actually signs up that yeah. were on the highway that would force you or they're going to tell you to turn your cell phones off they would actually have people blocking off the road when they would blast it we were 
Probably Savage. driving by it, I'd say, two or three times when they were actually blowing the rocks off. And it was very cool sitting in traffic and seeing, you know, chunks of the mountain flying off. A couple of trucks come and move the rocks out of the way. All the cars go in a single line. What's say? Mohegan Reservation. Very, mashed potato very confusing. If you're going down here, the maps, there's the first shot of Mohegan Sun. And we got off the wrong exit. There's two exits. One of the exits actually brings you to like the employee entrance, but the GPS, like when you're using Google Maps or you know your iPhone, anything like that, will tell you to get off the first exit. You go to the second exit, you actually see a better view when you're entering it. You see the helicopter pad and there's a gas station. That's kind of like the back entrance. Number one's Foxwoods. Um, anyway, so getting to Mohegan Sun here, I didn't really know how much you could record inside there. I know you can't record on the gaming floor and I know that you can't record well, like uh, aiming at the gaming floor. So I was just trying to be yeah. stealthy in the yeah, videoing. I kind of kept it to like the main common areas. And so going through the casino in one second here, I'm gonna give you some information. This is on Wikipedia on Mohegan Sun. It's an American casino with 364,000 square feet of gaming space. It's operated by the Mohegan tribe and is located on 240 acres of reservation land along the banks of the Thames River in Uncasville, Connecticut. Now, looking at this casino here, it looks like any other casino. Personally though, it is I believe very dated. It screams early 2000s casino. I remember going down here with my my grandparents and my mom, and because they used to have like this Christmas village where they had all these little shops set up, and you could do like Christmas shopping and stuff. So we go down there, and they had just a bunch of things that were on sale, a bunch of really good deals. It's a very large play space. That's actually one of the smaller play areas because there's like a giant smoking area then there's like a smaller no smoking area then there's like a high roller area so it's, all in all it's a very large casino not quite as big as Foxwoods I believe Foxwoods is a lot bigger um, so Mohegan Sun was 364,000 square feet let's see the sculpture right here this is very very cool that's been there since I believe the the uh, casino and the hotel and everything opened up for the very first time I don't know when it opened up. Let me go back. Uh, opening date was October 12, 1996. Now, one of the two, I don't know if it was Foxwood or Mohegan, uh, one of the two actually had a smaller like casino before. I remember going there and waiting with my grandmother or my grandfather in the parking lot while one of them went in really briefly to play some of the slot machines. That is all like the dining area and the shops up there. I don't like how every time you search something up it goes directly to the website. So let me go back here and see if I can find the Wikipedia for it. Okay, so opening date was July 5th, 1986. Total gaming space is 344, so 344,000 square feet. And I said Mohegan Sun was 364. So Mohegan Sun is actually larger. Um, Michael Jordan Steakhouse, very good. I, I can't remember if it's still there. I'm not sure the last time we went to Mohegan Sun, but they had a bunch of really good restaurants. They have this like Irish pub that's there. They had this restaurant called Johnny Rockets, which I do believe we go to later on in this video. There's a better shot of that. And the colors somewhat change on it. They're all blown glass and they're white, or a lot of them are white. So whatever light was shining on there changes the color of it. Bunch of cool stores, bunch of very, very expensive yeah. stores in here yeah, as we well. Stopped at Johnny Rockets. Yeah, this is uh, Johnny Rockets. This is what I was talking like about right here. It's like a diner, restaurant, restaurant theme themed yeah. type yeah. of place. Cool. They used to have all these cool things. You'll see them on the table where you could, you know, pick songs out from the jukebox, but I don't think they work anymore. There's a bunch of restaurants I remember going to as a kid and they would have those. Anyways, this was some good chili if I recall. Yeah, this was Probably the best chili. Best chili. Yeah, See, I just said it right there. I, I remember food very strangely. I, I can remember just getting to that, that clip there. Also, Han Solo and Carbonite. There's like a prop and movie theme type of store, like multimedia type of store there. And they had that very cool Han Solo and Carbonite. If I remember correctly, I think it was something like $7,500 or $10,000. It was very, very expensive. But anyways here, as we're coming to the very slow exit, 
that is going to do it for the very first episode of the very first season of Adventure Wednesday. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm going to throw a link up above of my most recent, my latest episode, the end of season six. If you want to see it, I think I've greatly improved my video producing and editing skills since then. But let me know what your impressions were down in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and tune in tonight at seven o'clock when there's a second episode of Beyond the Adventure coming out today, guys. I will see you later. Peace.